We're here, three o'clock Eastern time. We're here for the final hour for today's market. It's Tuesday, May the 3rd, 2022. And we're looking to watch this market close up. It's it has not it did not, it does not know what to do. <laughs> well, I will say it that way. It is positive right now. You'll give it that. Uh, the Dow's up 131 points at the moment. We had just been negative. Oh, 20 minutes ago, we were in negative territory after being wonderfully positive for a while. Uh, the Dow was up to 33,341. That's uh, 150 points from here. Couldn't hold it. So we were up almost 300 today. Now we're up 139 after just bouncing back from a dip. Um, so this market really is uh, um, gyrating a lot, trying to figure out where where is there a direction. Um, on some of our other, uh, other indexes, the S&P is up 29 points, the NASDAQ up 55. Uh, the NASDAQ is 0.44 higher, the Dow 0.43 higher. S&P up 0.71. That is the status right there. Oil down 229 a barrel to 102.88. Uh, gold is up five bucks a, an ounce today. That's what we have there. Now the question is uh, uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, you know, what is what's affecting the market today? What's really uh, affecting it? Why why is it doing what it's doing? Uh, is there an outside force holding it down? Um, possibly moving it higher, um, you know, that kind of thing. I'll take a look right now at interest rates. The 10-year uh, Treasury note for the U.S. government, uh, 2.963. So it's just sitting under 3% with, of course, uh, the Fed meeting tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, the uh, currency markets, uh, we have the euro at uh, just barely above 105, 105.23. The British pound is just under 125. It's 124.90. And the yen is dropping at 1.30, 130.17. So 130 yen to the dollar at the moment. So uh, the American dollar is gaining on the pound, the yen barely, and it's just hanging around with the euro right now. What other what other things are happening to the market? Well, <clears throat> or creating uh, consternation or whatever. <clears throat> Believe it or not, the uh, the outside world is uh, looking upon uh, the United States right now with absolute disbelief. Um, um, uh, I would have to say that, uh, uh, in particular, women around the world are looking at America going, what is wrong with you guys? Uh, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, is looks like it's going to out uh, throw out Roe versus Wade, and women around the world are outraged, uh, shocked, uh, in disbelief, can't just just stunned by it all, and uh, the uh, this is creating a real uh, a kerfuffle in Washington, to say the least. And this may this may alter the midterm elections to a degree that no one had thought um, anything could move the midterms. The uh, the the world view and the the consensus among political pundits had been that. Uh, the Democrats are probably not going to be able to energize their base. The uh, Republicans will energize their base, um, and they will uh, elect the Republicans into the House and, and Senate for majorities, creating an absolute gridlock for the United States economy and political agenda for the next two years. Um, that was the big, the big. Um, you know, we were all kind of resigned to that. Uh, all the polls showing the president uh, with a low approval rating or lowish. It's not like a disastrous approval rating. It's not like he's George W. Bush or or even uh, Trump. But um, it wasn't great. All of a sudden, this ruling, this 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 leak of this document with Roe versus Wade, has changed everything in twelve hours. Not even twelve hours. I heard of this last night around. Nine o'clock last night, my time. Well, yeah, I guess it's about some, since last night, about 17 hours. Uh, this has changed everything. Uh, the base is energized. The base is outraged. It's not energized. It's pissed off. And oh, this this is this is bad news. And you you, you you've got to understand how uh, um, the the momentum will now build higher and higher and higher. 
Uh, the only good news for the Republicans, there's only one bit of good news. This came out now in May, not in August. Because <laughs> it had come out in August, uh, there would have been very little time between August and the midterms. Right now, May and the midterms, that is still six months away. That's still a long time of time, five months, six months from now. But I, I think that if the, um, if the Democratic, um, of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The Democratic political promotion machine, as opposed to the Republican Demo, uh, political promotion machine. The Democrats ramp this thing up and spin this thing over and over and over again. By the time a November rolls around, it'll be at a crescendo of outrage. And that's where women could be going to vote um, upset, like mad as hell and showing up at the ballot box. You get that amongst the Democrats uh, across the U.S., and you can gerrymander all you want. Uh, there's problems, uh, but anyway, we'll <clears throat> we'll see. I I really uh, <clears throat> wonder how this is all going to go down. Um, but this could change the trajectory of politics in the U.S. dramatically. And uh, if I were Mitch McConnell, I would not be a happy guy today. This is the last thing he needed was that this decision got leaked. Uh, what he wanted. Uh, would have been a, a decision from the court in, in June sometime, and it would just been a, a press release from the court with no one to answer for it. Uh, it would just come out, and that would be the end of it. Um, and then he could just go, well, you know, hey, that's what the court said. But no, nope, it's coming out now, and it's uh, still in the works. This is really, uh, this is really not good for the Republican uh, leadership right now. And uh, anyway, we'll see what we'll see what happens. We'll see how upset. Uh, um, the voters get with regards to the the Democratic side because m the majority of Americans support Roe versus Wade the way it is. Um, most Americans are upset with these uh, red states going with anti-female legislation. They don't like it. But we're talking about state after state after state with very small populations. And when you take the entire country and you take 300 and what is it 55 360 million american people um and you take out the red states you, you figure out the red states where where the abortion thing is a you know is being where women are being attacked about it <clears throat> it's a minority of the country's population and this is why the majority are upset with the small minority but in the u.s 50 states each have rights they can all do their own thing and so it's it's a mess up here uh, in Canada, uh, the the women up here are very upset, very disappointed, uh, but they're also defiant. And they're basically uh, telling their American female friends, come on up here. Uh, come on, to, come to a vacation in Canada for a, a week or so and have a procedure done here and then go back home. Uh, you know, if the, if the Republicans think that the that this ruling is going to stop it, Think again. It's not going to stop. American women will go to whatever extreme they need to go to to get this done. Now, the very poor are are definitely in trouble. Uh, there's no no if ands or buts. There are definitely those who cannot afford to, <clears throat> you know, get on a plane and, and fly to another country to get the procedure done, or or maybe go across the country. I don't know. Um, there may well be underground railroad type scenarios set up, which really will be really will upset people i mean it's again it's so not necessary but in any event it's a political football if the democrats at the end of the day though seize control full control of the senate with like five votes more than they need then joe manchin's of the world won't screw it up for the democrats anymore they can hold their fork together and through the house and through the senate and through the white house they can pass bills to make the social contract complete between the U.S. government and its own citizens. Um, perhaps even an immigration bill could be passed. Perhaps even um, licensing of firearms could be passed or safety checks or something that 95% Americans, what 
that they want. Uh, but but right now it is a, a quagmire, and uh, <clears throat> the voters have to decide for themselves. Uh, how outraged are you with mass shootings? How outraged are you with illegal guns on the streets? How outraged are you with uh, you know the ability to transport guns over state lines without any repercussions? I mean, you know, it, it, it's just a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess, and um, America has to figure it out itself. I'm in Canada, and I can't help you. <laughs> I can only give you my plain English interpretation of what I see and sense and can understand. But um, on the outside, we, we shake our heads at the uh, dysfunctionalism, the complete dysfunctionalism of so many levels of the U.S. hierarchy right now. It is such a mess. Um, and uh, it's it's too bad because... Uh, we love Americans. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I just. I love the country. I love the people of America. I love the style of America. I love the uh, sense of America. I love so much about the USA. But um, uh, it is. It is uh, very puzzling how some Americans will tolerate dysfunction and call it freedom, and that's also what I just kind of go, oh, you guys are just, you guys need something. And maybe this was the something. This might be the something that changes things. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's talk about the stock market. Uh, we're up 60, 166 on the Dow right now. It's a tentative 166, but you're up. We're up 32 on S&P, up 63 on NASDAQ, oil down two bucks. Over at um, ATIP physical therapy down one half of a penny. It's just not given up this 160 odd dollar level, 168 range. Uh, it's been 162 to 169 today on 600,000 shares. Very quiet, very steady, stable there. Um, <clears throat> 181 gain on the down right now. Twitter down 20 cents. Rocket Lab down 40 cents to 706. Rocket Lab had a good start today, but couldn't hold it. Uh, in, and it had a good overnight. It had a good overnight because it had a launch last night. The launch went well, but they couldn't catch the um, they couldn't catch the, uh, the 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 rocket and bring it back in the way they wanted to. And so they're going to have to make some more adjustments. And so maybe that's why, or they're just selling on the news. I really don't understand why Rocket Lab is being picked on. Maybe people thought incredible greatness was going to happen. I have no idea. I don't know what people were expecting uh, from a rocket launch where they're going to try to catch a part of it. I, um, okay, a SoFi is up $0.08 cents to $6.4041. Now she's $6.41. The high today, $6.42. Uh, the low, $6.18. Volume, $20,990,000. We are really quiet here. Really quiet. we got to wait till the 10th of May. One more week. We have to wait one more week for SoFi to release their financials. So we... Tolerate this in the meantime. We got to wait it out. GameStop, 121.57, up $2. Now, the stock this morning was as low as 114.42. Uh, That's as low as it got. That was around, oh, 10.45 today. Then it hit its high of the day just around 2 o'clock this afternoon, just like before I came, uh, about an hour before, about an hour ago, an uh, hour and 15 minutes ago. It got up to 124.43. 124. It's now 121.62. The volume on GameStop today, 1.6 million shares. We're, we're not we're not bringing in big time volume here. So, <clears throat> could the shares back off? Yeah, uh, will they? I don't know. If the Dow backs off, this could get a little bit of profit taking. Maybe, maybe not. I I don't know. Um, earnings also, I think next week. So, is that true? Are there earnings next week on GameStop, or am I thinking of everybody else but GameStop? I could be wrong in that. Carvana down 253 a share to 5794. AMC up 60 cents to 1586. The shares reached a high of 1611 after bottoming out at 1473. Uh, 27 million shares. They got up to 1611, came back down into these uh, into this uh, 1550 range, 1540 range. Now 1586 up 60 cents. I have no news on AMC. Matterport is uh, down 46 cents at 560. The low today on Matterport has been 544, 7.1 million volume. Got a downgrade today. Um, I, I, I'm I a long-term fan, believe in this company. Corporately, they're growing. Um, the shares may be downgradable, but the company itself, I'm sure, is fine. But anyway, they're sitting on a mountain of cash. 
I'm just waiting for something to break. Uh, something, something. Come on, guys. Uh, six there, up 42 cents to 12.06. <clears throat> We've got ME down six and a half cents to three dollars and a half a penny. <clears throat> Spire down nine and a half cents to 164 and a half. Haycroft Mining is up 17 cents. I don't know why it's up. I don't know um, if it's up because AMC is up. I don't know if it's up because GameStop is up. I don't know that because GameStop went up that this went up and that AMC went up. Like, I don't know who's creating what with anybody. There are no connections between GameStop, this company, GameStop, and AMC. There's no connections. There's no common business. There's no alignment of the universe. They're just meme stocks. And all three are up. And that's all I can tell you. I got nothing. Uh, Smart Rent is down 16 cents to 467. I got Pfizer up 116 to 49.50. Hewlett Packard, um, uh, HPQ at 38 bucks a share, up 94 cents. Um, Robin Hood, 1007, still down 41. Vanek Vectors was down, up, break even, up. Down, up, or up, we're up 279 at $239 a share. We're really not going anywhere from 234 to 240. It's a $6 spread all day. That's the range all day long. And it's up $2.67. Home Depot down 85 cents, trying to break even. Texas Instruments down 54 after being up and being down. It's still down at the moment, 54. It's trying to come back. <clears throat> it's been as low as 172.12 today. It's been as high as 174.79. This is a $2.67 spread. This isn't moving. I mean, there is nothing good happening here, but nothing catastrophically bad either. But it's not going anywhere. Um, again, options can be written on something like this. It's just not going anywhere. IBM 132.62 down 39 cents. Microsoft down a buck 96. Been down all day. Apple 162 on the gain. Uh, been up almost uh, all the last four hours. It's been higher, but not a lot. 159.58. Goldman Sachs up four dollars eighty eight cents to three hundred fifteen dollars. The high today three nineteen. The low three eleven. <clears throat> right in the middle of the range. Cisco up eighteen cents at fifty dollars four cents. It's just sitting there. Uh, Facebook up one seventy eight. Amazon is down eleven dollars. Tesla up five eighty to nine oh eight. Google down is up thirty one bucks. Google is up thirty one. Um, Bed Bath Beyond up 35 cents to 1408. Blackberry up a nickel at 591. Royal Caribbean down 56 cents to 77.82. Target is up 350. JP Morgan up 330. Costco down a buck 40. Walmart up a dollar. And Viddy up a buck 50. Disney up a quarter at $113. American Airlines up 65 cents to 1920. Um, Netflix up a dollar sixty-eight at two oh one right now. Moderna, Moderna up four ninety-eight to one hundred forty-seven dollars a share. There is the uh, there is the report. We're at, we're up one forty-two point nine, hundred forty-three points. Uh, we could end the day right here, zero like flat or down one hundred fifty, and and the market that. That's what is possible in the last 40 minutes. We really don't have direction. It's a, uh, <clears throat> I'll give you this much. The stock's up 123 points right now, a weak 123, not a solid 123, not at all solid, very shaky. Welcome to the markets today. Uh, 121.26 on GameStop, up $1. 69 cents. Not a lot happening there either. Um, yes. And uh, I don't see much in the way of headlines that are getting me all you know wired up or anything great. So there you go. Welcome one. Welcome all to this uh, to this afternoon show. Thank you for these thumbs up so far, everybody. Appreciate these. 34 I see from uh, Nicholas. 34 from Larry Titus. Uh, 36 from Larry Titus. Thanks, Larry. Um, and um, let's see, uh, what else? Uh, uh, what's cooking, Wendy? Number 37, not your daddy's doobie, number 40. Um, and uh, what else is going on? Uh, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
number 42 for DH. And uh, thank you, guys. A lot of people talking about this uh, ruling with regards to the, to the to the Supreme Court. I really uh, <clears throat> I don't want to really go there. Uh, Splair, during all these problems on the world, actually, I'm almost done with Seinfeld. 32 episodes to go. Well done. <laughs> Um, yep, they caught the rocket. They just let it go for safety reasons, they're saying. Um, and uh, Nick S., number 58, thumbs up. Thanks, buddy. Algo Bruce, Tex, uh, 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 Texas Instruments is training in a tight training range. What does it mean when something like this happens? Some big fund is buying or unloading or what? No, there's no participation of anybody today. Um, it, it does not mean that there are big funds in the stock or out of the stock or try to manipulate the market or anything. Nothing like that at all. Um, um, a lot of you who, if any of you out there believe that big hedge funds and everything try to control every stock out there, it's just not the case. Uh, stocks trade on their own. Uh, the, uh, the public at large and the mood of the market is what, what motivates buyers and sellers, I guess, is the only way to say it. Um, there are days where sometimes a hedge fund wants to get into a stock for whatever reason. Sometimes they want to get out of a position for whatever reason. Um, and uh, there are times where, where a hedge fund will want to sell Texas Instruments, not because they're unhappy with Texas Instruments. It just is that they feel that the money represented in that investment would be better served could it be built in another investment entirely they might want to shift out of a china connected businesses and be involved in uh cigarette businesses or uh, gasoline oil and gas companies or totally different sector entirely there's there's no rhyme or reason to it um so today this tight range is not because of the stock being manipulated or controlled or anything like that. It's just today's a quiet day. Uh, we really haven't done a lot today uh, compared to lately. Um, anyway, Travis, uh, number 63. Thank you, buddy, for being here. Number 63, LL, number 41. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, what else going to Mallow? Number 65, thumbs up. Thanks, buddy. Um, it, it, is it... Uh, is it market maker uh, to control the option prices? Is the market maker then trying to control the option prices? No, 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 not, not really. Um, uh, there's just, there's no, you, you cannot, you, you cannot dominate a multi, very high value company. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with the right words here. Uh, hang on a second. I want to see something before I go further. Okay, Te Texas Instruments is market capitalized at just under $160 billion, all right? Now, for a hedge fund to dominate the stock of Texas Instruments and control every nuance of that stock uh, would become apparent to the regulators like that, so that wouldn't happen. And number two, it would have to be a $500 billion hedge fund. $500 billion hedge funds don't waste their time trying to control markets. They don't, they don't bother with that. As a matter of fact, they hate stocks like that. They would rather be involved in, in markets where there isn't domination by bigger players than themselves. They like to be in the liquid market. And hedge funds are very smartly operated and very well-run organizations most of the time, like 99% of the time. They're pretty good at what they do. There's a reason they're as big as they are, and they attract the kind of money they attract. They kind of know what they're doing. And they're involved in perhaps hundreds of investments at the same time. So you might have a $500 million hedge fund, but you might not, you may only have a few positions that have $10 million each of investment, and the rest of them are less than $5 million each with 100 different investments at the same time. So you're running $500 million, but you're running 100 different investments inside the $500 million fund. That might be the way it's going. And the fund might have it allocated where a quarter of the money, $125 million, is in long-term bonds or treasury notes. Another $125 million, or quarter of the fund, is involved in high-yielding dividend stocks. Another quarter of the fund is in... Uh, higher PE multiple type growth companies. And the final quarter of the fund 
is uh, uh, involved in maybe um, other hedge funds investing, investing in other hedge funds, or investing in in uh, mutual funds or uh, ETFs, uh, likely. And and all throughout the fund, you've got the option guys, the option guys and girls, that department, and they're tasked with writing options on certain positions that they're holding to enhance income and, and cash flow coming in all the time. Um, it's a very complicated, these are complicated entities that just don't have one thing that they're involved with. There's no such thing as a Texas instrument hedge fund that dominates Texas instruments. No, not happening. Um, in any event, uh, that, that's, that's just a, a brief, a brief, you know, try, I'm trying to describe the business and that's it. Hope I'm helping. Uh, I don't know if I am. Um, let's see, uh, Mr. T I'm thumbs up 67. Thank you, bud. Uh, let's see, um, New York Democratic lawmakers are trying to pass a new bill requiring financial firms to show what they're doing with hundreds of billions of dollars of Americans' retirement savings. And what are your thoughts? Uh, again, uh, Michael, I don't know the details of this bill. I don't understand. I, I've never heard of it, so I know nothing about it. So I can't comment on, on specifics of the bill. What's the intent here? Is this... Is this an attempt uh, to become, to make these entities become more transparent because the SEC isn't being demanding on transparency? Is that it? Maybe um, it's all I can. It's all I can guess. Karim, there there was a portfolio manager on CNBC earlier talking about how they heavily shorted SPACs for downside protection. Uh, could that be one or the issue with why our faves are so low? Downside protection, how they heavily shorted SPACs for downside protection. I, I don't understand that term um, because you would short something because something else is going to go up. Uh, you would short something to lock in a gain maybe. Um, um, how can you bet against yourself, I suppose, is what I'm kind of wondering. I mean, if you have a... If you have a, 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 you know, how a portfolio manager shorts SPACs, uh, they've got to be negative on SPACs. Uh, so th what are they protecting themselves against? I don't understand that. Um, uh, losing money on some other investment somewhere else? I'm not sure. Now, <clears throat> fair enough. If there's a, uh, if there's a, uh, a person like this, a portfolio manager, as you're referring to here, uh, there's nothing illegal and wrong by shorting anything if you believe it's going lower, um, of course. <clears throat> um, and perhaps uh, uh, this particular group of people involved in this entity, they felt that the SEC interference and how they inserted themselves into the SPAC market in a very, very aggressive way. Maybe they felt that this was a sign that there could be trouble in high-flying SPAC stocks, and they'd be, they be you know, they they might back down. Did they short the SPACs we're into? I they might have. They might have shorted a hundred others as well. Can't say. Um, the question is, when do you cover? Um, how low do you think they're going to go before you do cover? And is the short bet? Just uh, we're just going to get like twenty percent profit, and then we're out of here, and then we're out of here. We're, we're we're taking it out, or are we looking for? Um, are we? Are they truly looking at spacs they think are going out of business? Because I find that hard to fathom. That uh, even the spacs we're following, I don't see these guys going out of business. They're funded. Uh, they have virtually no debt. They're extremely well funded. They can go years and years and years uh, without running out of money. So these portfolio managers have got to be. They've got to really be into some kind of a time frame of a trade of some kind with some kind of a plan to say, well, as soon as we're up 50%, we'll start, we'll slowly start buying it back and, you know, get out from under it, uh, I guess. Um, but again, I, you know, Karim, I, I can't answer these guys. Michael, most related to pension funds. Okay. Uh, why isn't that public knowledge to begin with this? This is, my, this is my question. Why isn't that public knowledge? I don't know. Um, Michael, it, it could well be that it is public knowledge, but no one gives a crap. Uh, maybe it's uh, <clears throat> maybe it's a uh, a bill that's destined to die on the Senate floor or 
or on the uh, at the governor's desk. I mean, I don't know. I'm not into New York state politics, so I can't help you there. Mike, they've been trying to steal pensions for decades, so I wouldn't fight uh, that trend as the answer for sure. Cody, we have seen the financial sector get get up to systemic hijinks before, though. Uh, Michael, yes, Bruce, uh, transparency. Uh, there you go. Um, John, uh, why are you protected from having to disclose a short position? Um, yeah, I agree. Why? Why is? Why does the SEC not mandate uh, declaration of short positions? I I don't know. Uh, no one answers that question anywhere. Number seventy six uh, from Options Nomads. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks you guys for being uh, being here. Thank you for the thumbs ups, John. Yeah, it's free money for them since they don't have to disclose. Share unlocks low, no real earnings in the near term. Um, Splitter, maybe it's meant to have low downside prices to buy very cheap before it's going next year's crazy like some SPACs had already done, yeah, maybe. 99 Nation, no transparency, no way of knowing who couldn't cover <clears throat> their positions and who was laid out thin. That's the protection usually mentioned in those kinds of stories, exactly. Uh, has anyone here, here had good thoughts about AMD earnings lately? I have heard nothing. Michael John, uh, uh, in all, more than $1.4 trillion has been funneled from public pension funds into alternative investments like private equity, hedge funds, and real estate. <clears throat> yeah, I can see where uh, pension fund managers um, of let's say like look for example the New York uh, the New York uh, uh, New York City Teachers Pension Fund or the State of New York Teachers Pension Fund, the firemen and police pension funds, the public services pension funds, the uh, uh, large corporate pension funds they're they're run by administrators. <clears throat> and they're <clears throat> they're designed to flow cash for retirees. They're there to collect contributions from working people, and then upon retirement to pay out. Uh, but they have to be diversified. And um, I know in Canada, for example, the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund, which again Ontario is the province in Canada with the most people, that pension fund is worth. Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars it is massive and i know for a fact that that pension fund owned the shopping mall that i had a store in way back in the 90s uh, it was the owner and was ultimately my landlord um, through of course multiple management companies um, the ontario teachers pension fund um spent uh, tens of millions of dollars into that property, into that shopping mall, Calgary's largest shopping mall, uh, home of an Apple store and home of uh, Sephora and and Coach and uh, Tiffany's is there. It's Calgary's number one demographic mall. Probably 250 shops and it's it's a big place. But the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund, they did the right thing. They bought the mall in the 80s, and they began doing phased renovations of this mall. And this particular mall has thrived and is still very popular and very successful, unlike <clears throat> certain cities in North America where malls have crapped out because, you know, there have been uh, malls that haven't survived. And that's happened in Calgary. We've had two malls in Calgary that have disappeared in the last 10 years but this one <clears throat> has done very well perfect location uh the best retailer realtor retailers and they have a landlord that is spending money on the property making it a a pleasurable experience as a shopper to go to um and so the ontario teachers pension fund is sitting on an asset that is worth a lot more money today than it was when they got it inflation adjusted as well so it's not only worth more money in in an inflation point of view, but in reality, they have made a lot of money and they've cash flowed out of there. Um, and so uh, rent is being paid on the property and uh, rent goes into the corporation that runs the entity. And every quarter, every year, a transference of money is sent to the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund as its backer owner uh, to help fund the fund's needs. <clears throat> um, so you want transparency? Okay, I guess you could demand that pension funds reveal to some state regulator, I guess. Is that New York's intent, intention? 
is it is it uh, is it the intense is it the intention of New York State to have here's Michael's comment again to have these entities disclose to the state where the money is going? Um, I don't know what's illegal about it. Like I don't see anything illegal about a pension fund uh, having uh, you know two hundred billion dollars under administration and it is involved in fifteen hundred different investments. I don't see the problem there. If these investments are legitimate uh, entities uh, themselves, I don't know what the problem is. I would be disturbed if it started to cost these pension funds millions of dollars in fees to be reporting to these entities because that's stealing money from the pension fund indirectly, which is directly taking money from the pensioners. That's not a good thing. We don't need New York State, in theory, to guarantee a pension fund's legitimacy in that sense. I mean, there's all kinds of safety checks in place already, but I'm not going into that. I don't want to go into that. It, it, it's a, it is a rabbit hole with a million tributaries. But I don't know what the deep, deep need is for New York to want to do it other than they feel they should know. Um Maybe they're being too noisy, nosy. Maybe not. On the other hand, maybe they're deciding since the SEC won't do it, the SEC won't deeply look into their affairs. We will. Maybe that's it. Robert Benson, thank you for being thumbs up number 81. Teachers, police, firefighters, these are huge pensions. That's true. That is very true. 99. Uncle Bruce, ever heard of NISA Investment Advisors? NISA. Doesn't, doesn't ring a bell with me. Uh, Michael, uh, Kim's initiative comes on the heels of news that one of Wall Street's most famous private equity firms used New York pensioner savings to finance a buyout of major of a major group home company. Again, I this is local. I don't know. Michael, where bottom line driven management led to deaths and countless injuries among vulnerable people with disabilities. Michael, I'll stop spamming now. Just crazy to me. Um, uh, 99 Nation. We're all in the age of runaway capitalism. People are always getting maimed and, and or murdered. Uh, Michael is saying yes. Again, I don't, I don't know um, the local politics of it all and uh, and what have you. I, I just, I, you know, just fifty states with fifty pension fan funds for teachers and firefighters and everything. Another bunch of pension funds. The public workers, uh, the the towns and the cities. It's, it's just. Tens of thousands of pension funds out there. Tens of thousands everywhere uh, around the world. I mean, uh, try, try to find it all, try to track it all. Good luck. The problem is that these people see a mountain of money that isn't theirs, but they want to put it to work for them anyway. Again, Nation, I really don't believe that's the case. Um, the The Ontario Teachers Pension Fund is run by top-notch money managers uh, who are running a fund that is so um, – how do I say this? Uh, uh, there are uh, there are rules in place. Uh, there are guidelines in place as to how much of a percentage or how many dollars maximum can be in any one investment. Uh, this shopping mall I was talking about in Calgary, uh, it might have been worth fifty million dollars in the eighties. It's probably worth today five hundred million dollars today. Uh, but $500 million of a $500 billion fund is such a slice of a slice of a slice. And the mall is run by a management company, a, a, a real estate management company that runs hundreds of malls. That's all they do. And they run it very well. And their contractors are renewed annually. Uh, so there's no shenanigans there. Uh, audits everywhere. No shenanigans. The pension fund... Uh, um, doesn't own 500 shopping malls. They might own percentages of other property companies. Office towers, they do own parts of office towers. They do own industrial parts. They're very diversified. They own stock. They own bonds. Uh, they own uh, debt. Uh, they, they, they own uh, uh, just endless assets all over the place. And they have people running these assets all over the place. And there's no one guy that can just take off with a billion dollars you never hear from them again it, it's just no 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 not not gonna happen 
Okay. Uh, again, I don't have time to get into all that either. Okay. Uh, Splatter, interesting. AMD is producing their chips at TSMC in Taiwan, designed in the U.S. Michael, I'm all for more transparency everywhere. Me too. A nation, not Congress. I'm so glad there are better men in Canada because what I'm mentioning is normally here in the States. Guess how many of us have pensions? Um, the answer is unicorn, says 99. Um, Michael, assuming the industry standard fee model, they make about $40 billion annually off these pensions here. Again, um, uh, pensions are run uh, by professionals, and uh, there are uh, there are uh, guidelines in place for how they're paid. There are boards of directors that are on top of all these uh, that are independent. There are independent auditing agencies on top of this. I mean, it, it, the oversight is unbelievable. There is phenomenal oversight for this sort of stuff. Um, and so, um, you know, the Hollywood movie thing just isn't going to work. Number 599 so five bears today, huh, boys? Uh, uh, no 599 so five bears today. But 636 on so five, 120.58 on GameStop. We're up a buck on GameStop, up three cents on SoFi. The Dow down now, down 11 points. Again, negative. Yet again, we're negative on the Dow. How many times has this happened today? It has just been a yo-yo of a market all over the place, and it is just unbelievable. Um, amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, we're up nine points on SP, down nine on NASDAQ. We're not going anywhere today. Today is a, it's kind of like a dull hanging around day until tomorrow. Tomorrow, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed. All righty. Um, Nicholas, what a nothing burger on the market. Everyone waiting for the Fed decision. Bingo. There you go. That's what we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? Um, I like where your head is at, Michael, uh, says uh, John right there. Yeah. I, I would very much love to see transparency on short sales. Yep. I would like to know transparency on option positions, large option positions by institutional investors. If you are an institutional investor and you have to report that you own 5,000 shares of Apple because you represent 5,000 investors or 500 investors or 85 investors, then I want you to tell me what you're short as well. Not just long, but also short. Whether you have written calls, whether you are holding put contracts, whether you've shorted stock, I want it all. It's easily uh, reportable. It's easily uh, updatable. And uh, this shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. But it is an issue. Privacy is everywhere. And then there's the, the derivative market. And we have no idea of, of knowing what private hedge funds are doing in the derivatives market. Now, there's the I've used the word private hedge funds the, the the two words private hedge funds they're private they are not public they are handling people's capital in a private way the people who invest in them would like to remain private so you got to respect that fair enough however if the private hedge fund is in an investment that could materially affect the value of a good of a of an asset of a company's public stock, a perceived value of real estate that could uh, material affect other people. It's no longer a private matter anymore. Now it is a non-private issue. It is a public issue. This is where we need oversight, I think, and that's what should be happening. But there is no body that, uh, there is no independent body whatsoever that uh, monitors the derivatives markets. And it is a multi, multi-trillion dollar business huge business there are skyscrapers in downtown london because of this and in paris and in milan and in frankfurt and everywhere else because of this business it is a big big business no transparency complete mystery there you go uh what else um the bears will feast because of the fed says coyote Mirko, uncle bruce hey i sold at gamestop 120 May uh, 20th contract and a 125 May 27th both for 1019 in the morning. I bought both back around eight bucks. Sold them again at 1119. Let's see what tomorrow gives. Thanks for playing. Love being casino. There you go, Mirko. You've got it. You're nailing it. And that is the name of this game. 12025 up only 68 cents on GameStop. We're not going anywhere. The Dow's down 33 points. Karim. 
Uh, I think the F, the Fed rate hike is already priced in. I mean, at this point, it's no surprise about the hike. It's not that. It's what they say about it. That is where the reaction, the reaction will come from tomorrow. It is how the re remarks of the Fed chairman are interpreted. That is what's going to move markets, good or bad. I got to go. Take care, all, says John. I'm out of whiskey, so I'll just have a 636 beer. You take care, buddy. Uh, Michael, later, John. You take care, pal. Thanks for being here today. Yes, it's the way it, the remarks will be interpreted and, and dissected. That is what's going to move the markets tomorrow afternoon and on Thursday. And then, of course, Friday and next week. So, yeah, we're only just getting into the guessing party game right now. That is for sure. <clears throat> the Dow right now down 36 points. The S&P is, uh, is up 7, and the NASDAQ is down just around 16.7 now. It looks like 16.7 on NASDAQ. Oil, 234 lower, lower at 102.83. All right. Thank you out there. For those of you out there who have been sending me emails uh, to my email account right here. This is my email address, brucefarmhotmail.com. Thank you. Those of you who would like to join me and would like to join Antigen this Saturday right here on a private uh, telecast, we have a class. Class number 13 will be created right in front of your very eyes. We're going to talk about stink bids, stink offers, how to maximize those, and we're going to go over the psychology of the market. <clears throat> if you'd like to be part of that class, send me an email right here. I will send you a, a registration thingy uh, with instructions on how to become a member of this weekend's class, number 13, uh, that we're going to produce Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern time this Saturday. So let me know. Uh, fire me an email and say, Bruce, I'd like to register for your class. Uh, what do you want me to do? And we'll tell you uh, uh, the instructions to follow so you can be part of the Part of the class on Saturday this week. Okay, coming up in <clears throat> four days. Fantastic. Okay, those of you who are still interested in um, getting involved in the four for three deal, I have uh, classes, of course. There are 12 classes on my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. There, there are 12 classes there. You can get four for the price of three. That expires this week. That deal dies this week. If you're still interested in that, Send me a private email, and uh, I'll give you instructions on what to do there, uh, how to take advantage of that offer, and uh, we'll get you set up, okay? And for those of you who have already um, taken advantage of the 4 for 3 deal, I know that a good number of you have. Congratulations. I, I, was, I was hoping it would be successful, and it has been. And uh, I know a lot of you are right now into watching these classes. Fantastic. Uh, you've got the right market right now to uh, to write options in, without a doubt. Without a doubt. All righty, we're up 35 uh, points, 48 points on the Dow, it looks like. A little positive again after going negative again. Back and forth and back and forth. Uh, <clears throat> the two-day uh, uh, two uh, Fed meeting is getting underway, and we'll know tomorrow what the Fed has to say about the current state of interest rates. Expect that one half point rise tomorrow. Okay. All righty. Uh, SoFi is up four to 637. GameStop is up 96 cents to 120.52. We're down to 11 minutes before we're done for the day. So we're getting close. Uh, 99 nations of hikes needed are not priced in, which is a bigger issue. If it isn't 10% plus, it's not a paper proper hike. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, any Amsterdam news? Ah. That's right. I was supposed to give you dates today, and I am not ready. Um, I'm still totally dysfunctional on our uh, schedule. Um, as a matter of fact, after this show is over, I'm going to be nailing down our final hotel reservations. So give me until tomorrow, and I will let you know where we're at, when we're at, so we can get together for meet and greets in Europe. Uh, so Splare, tomorrow. I will have your answer for you, so just bear with me, my friend. All right. Um, um, Austin, I gave the keys to a secured room in our house 
to my two and a half year old daughter because she was crying to hold them. The keys are now lost. Locksmith said, I will need to cut through the wall. Is SoFi up? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, we're up four cents. Oh my gosh. Uh, Austin, I'm thumbs up number 107. Oh my goodness. Yikes, man. Yikes. I, I, I just, I, I, I. GameStop 12060 up a dollar and three cents with, um, looks like 10 minutes left in the day right now. Oh, my, Michael is loving this. Uh, oh, no. Um, ATIP uh, down one and a half cents. Uh, nothing burger. The Dow now down 15 points. Uh, Twitter down 38 cents. Uh, Rocket Lab down 38 cents. SoFi up three. GameStop up 66. We got a nothing burger going on here. Uh, AMC is only up 26 cents. It's backing off again. Matterport, 554 down 50. 555. Sextera up 47 to 1212. 23 uh, and Me down 8.5 to 298.5. Spire down 9.5. To 164 and a half. Um, smart rent 14 cents lower, 469. We don't have a lot going on here. It's one of those uh, very quiet sessions as we are drifting into the close, waiting for tomorrow's Fed. Um, those of you who have written calls on GameStop today, um, taking advantage of this 124 pop, congratulations. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. Uh, each day goes by. These contracts, they shrink, they shrink, they shrink, they shrink. Uh, if you're long a contract on GameStop, you got to be pulling your hair out because you're just going, man, I bought this thing when the stock was 122 a, a share and it went down to 114 today, got to 124. Now at 120, I'm not making any money here. That's right. Option holders are not making any money on GameStop contracts um, because they're shrinking. They're, they're slowly but surely shrinking up. Okay. Spur, this sounds great. Can't wait to travel to that city, Amsterdam. Michael, uh, was it keys to the gold bar room, he wants to know? Credit Savage, hey, Uncle Bruce, my theory is that the markets were so bloody because everyone was moving monies around to take positions and pricing in this 50 basis point thing. If rates go up by 50 basis points, we fly. If less, we skyrocket. Yeah, I think we, we might even go down um, because it's always sell on the news or – you know, if they're talking like, uh, well, we've raised to fifty basis points, and we're, you know, we're thinking we're going to go, uh, we're going to keep doing this for the foreseeable future. Well, then the speculation is how many more are behind it. If it's two more, well, then the rates are one and three quarter percent. If it's three more, then the rates are two and a quarter percent. If it's four more, it's two point seven five percent. Like the game will continue. The speculation, the 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 uh, the outrageous headlines will keep coming out. Uh, from the uh, eyeball seekers, uh, the clickbait seekers. You're going to get a lot of stupid headlines the next couple of days, and we'll just have to you know, discount it and go from there. Okay. Uh, Austin, Michael, it isn't a cheap room. Uh, Karin, does Euro Trip mean no Wednesday night show? Uh, does Euro Trip mean no Wednesday night show? Uh, I haven't even thought about this. Uh, there will likely be a Wednesday show for Gold Bagel members. The question is, at what time will it be for Gold Bagel members? Because I am not in the Eastern time zone. I am seven hours ahead on the continent. So it might be a little earlier for you guys than you're, than you're used to now. So it may not be in prime time. Because if I wanted to do an 8 o'clock prime time show, Eastern time, I'd have to do the show at 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, and that's not going to happen over there. I'd try another locksmith, says Mike. Um, uh, I hope my little ramble works well tomorrow. Betting against Starbucks and betting positively on AMD. Um, Austin, Michael, Robin Hood, Men of Tights, call the blacksmith. <laughs> We're down to uh, six minutes uh, to go. Uh, the Dow is now... Up 107 points. Are you surprised? Uh, it's just, it's all over the place, okay? Um, we've got uh, S&P up 23. we got NASDAQ up 28. Um, I don't know. Biden is telling Congress to approve extra Ukraine aid, as he says, the U.S. taxpayers are contributing to freedom. There you go. 
Um, let's see. Uh, 120.94 up a buck 49 on uh, GameStop. 121 even right now. SoFi up three to 636. Uh, even with a Dow up 98 points, there's more red showing on most of our stocks that we're following. Not a lot of red, just a bit. Uh, AMC up still 26 cents. Matterport down 51. ME down eight. Spire down a dime. Okay. All right. Uh, there you go. Uh, 101 gain on the Dow Jones right now. On the big boys, uh, we've got uh, a Vanek up a buck 80. Uh, Home Depot down two bucks. Texas is Texas Instruments down a dollar 44. To 172.56, IBM down 57 cents, Microsoft down 281, could not break even today. Apple 124 gain at 159.20, it's up but not by a lot. Uh, Goldman up 487 to 315, Cisco up six cents, Facebook up 95 cents, Amazon down 760, Tesla up 540, Google up 1960. And that's where we're at on this market, guys. We are down to uh, four minutes, just around four minutes left. We're up 100 on the Dow. GameStop, 120.89, up 132. SoFi up a nickel, 638. Okay. Um, it's 2 a.m. here in Connell, Europe for the primetime show. Yeah, I won't be doing the primetime show at 2 a.m. No, I won't be doing that. Splare Crim, I have a feeling it'll be the first late evening show for some of these Wednesdays. For me, it's enjoyable if it'll be like that. I'll be on tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I'll be on next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. That you can count on. The Wednesday after that, uh, that one has to be, that one will have to probably be from, uh, I might be in Edinburgh on that one. I'm not even sure. I'll uh, I'll let you know. Um, I'll get back to you. Uh, we're on the road. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Dave, the Mac guy, uh, come on, Stink asks, I made you a little less stinky. You could fill already. Uh, Splare, by the way, you could all have a good night and keep a clear head for tomorrow. There there you go. There's always that. Um, we're down to uh, three minutes. Uh, last three minutes, we're up 93 on the Dow, 21 on, on S&P, and we're up 24.9 on NASDAQ. We're not going really anywhere here. Um, just a choppy trading day today. That's really what it is, a choppy trading day. Okay. Credit Savage, we'll play it by ear. Larry, uh, three minutes, bells, and meeting starting at the same time. The meeting will have to wait. The bells come first. Uh, there's certain obligations that Larry has to uh, look after. Ringing the bells, I guess, is one of them. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, watching the close coming through. We're up 72 on the Dow, a little... Little late uh, pullback. Uh, so what? It's a nothing burger day today. Uh, we were up 300 plus and couldn't hold it. So there's the verdict on the day today. Could not hold a big gain. Uh, U.S. market. Uh, U.S. market closing is 10 p.m. in Europe. There you are, Coyote. That is a societal obligation. <laughs> I said, Larry, it's a societal obligation. There you go. Two minutes to go. <clears throat> and then Larry can go to his meeting. Uh, there you have it. Uh, the meeting will begin once Larry is ready to begin the meeting, and that will be the end of that. Fair enough. We're up 74 on the Dow right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. 639 on SoFi, up six cents. 120, um, 56 on GameStop, up a dollar right at the moment, up one dollar on GameStop today. <laughs> One and and one minute and a little more to go, and we're just about done for today's session, kids. 81-point gain on the Dow Jones. A quiet one. It is a quiet one. They can't all be barn burners. What are you going to do? Uh, thank you all for uh, hanging out with me today. Appreciate it. And hopefully you've learned something new today and or have had some successful trades. 117 thumbs ups. Thank you for that. Uh, appreciate those uh, coming in as we finish off here. With one minute to go and uh, with an 81 point gain on the Dow Jones. Okay. Let's um, Larry. I hope it's not an important meeting like in Seinfeld from the friend to Jerry that ends up in the new job at the chicken restaurant. Uh, Nicholas, up or down? Hopefully tomorrow is more exciting. Austin, Michael, I know we said 5.99 beers, but I'm probably having a beer regardless. Uh, Gaiotti, tomorrow will be interesting. Yes. Uh, Bama Babe, difficult day today to make money. Markets were flat. 
not a lot of big ups or downs, but there's always tomorrow. That is correct. That is correct. And the key is that you didn't lose money today. That's the other key to this market. If a lousy day is a nothing day uh, and a good day is where you make money, then you're yet, usually you're ahead of the curve, and that's good stuff. Michael, ouch, stop twisting my arm. Um, Nick, I want to see Texas Instruments drop like a rock below 160. Larry Titus, the bells are ringing at Larry's house. Thank you, Larry, Larry very much for that. This meeting could have been an email. Uh, there you go. Thanks, Larry, for those bells. We're done. We're up 65 points at the very end of the day here on the Dow, or at least it would seem that we've gained 65. We'll see if this changes in the next three or four minutes. Final adjustments will come through. Um, Larry, meeting time. We'll see the folks tomorrow. Thanks, Larry. You take care, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Um, Elephant Titus has rung the bells. There you go. The man, the, uh, the man has done his job, and thank you, sir, for that. A 65-point final gain on the Dow, it would appear, uh, after gyrating up and down and up and down, I don't know how many times today, um, but at the end, not a lot happened. We're up seven cents to 640 on SoFi, closing with a little bit of an um, up move. The high of the day was 642. 26.8 million volume, extremely light for games uh, for SoFi. That now is not a very active day. GameStop 150, uh, 120.52 was the final bell uh, quote up 95 cents on 1.8 million volume. Aftermarket at the moment is showing 119, but I don't know if you want to believe in that. That may be a bit of a, a an off quote. Uh, Sean and Wendy, God is amazing, says, thanks, Larry. Cindy B., I used to wonder why Ameritrade had to default, had a default of 10 contracts when using Thinkorswim to sell covered calls. I always wondered why, because that's how the big boys and girls uh, to do. Um, I don't know. Financial Duncan Shades. Uh, thanks, Duncan. How you doing, buddy? Uh, 120.43 now in GameStop in the aftermarket. We're down just, just nine cents. So um, back to normal there. Uh, Rocket Lab 711 down 35 cents. The low on Rocket Lab 702, 3.5 million volume today. Um, AMC ended up with a 23 cent gain to 15.50. Matterport. Ended up at 555, down 50 cents. Low of the day, 544, 8.1 million volume today. Sixtera up 46 cents to 1210. ME closed to 299, uh, down 8 cents on 2 million volume today. That's ME. Spire down a dime to 164. Uh, Haycroft Mining up 16 cents to 146. Haycroft Mining volume today, 15.7 million. It, it had a, a, a down morning. This is Haycroft mining. First half hour, nothing happened. Then it took a little shot from about uh, 130 to 143. Then it backed off a half an hour later to about 135. And then from there, it came on just to climb very steadily to 146 final close. But 15.7 million, not 350 million shares like we were trading a month or a bit ago when this first announcement between AMC was made. That stock was trading 350 million a day for like a week. It's now 15 million shares. Smart rent down 15 cents. Pfizer up 97 to 49.31. Um, Hewlett Packard up 86 to 37.92. And that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, we just don't have much of a day going on today. We're going to watch everything tomorrow. We'll watch everything tomorrow for the rate hike. Uh, make sure it's a half a point. Um, will they surprise us? They could. They might come out and say we're making it a three-quarter of a rate uh, point. We're going to make it a 0.75, not half. Uh, or they might come out and say we're going to make it a one full percentage point up, uh, up, uh, bump up. Because we're not uh, we're not satisfied with uh, the inflation situation, they might do a full percentage point tomorrow um, and take a lot of guesswork out from there, and then say you know the likelihood of half point rises for the next few months might still be on the table, and that gets us to two two and a half percent quick. Maybe that's the plan. I don't know. Um, we'll find out what the plan is. What's what's your plan? That's your whole plan. <clears throat> we'll see. Anyway, there you have it. After hours. We're trading uh, unchanged on Rocket Lab. We're down two on SoFi. GameStop up 111 now to 121.70. 
AMC down a penny, Matterport down three cents. Oh, sorry, up three cents in the aftermarket. 23andMe, no change. Spire up half a penny, about, looks like about half a penny. Nothing on ATIP. Smart Rent up uh, five cents, 473 in the aftermarket. Six stair unchanged. Apple up 36 cents. Goldman is up $1.27 to $315.98 in the aftermarket. Cisco unchanged. Tesla up seven cents. Arc Innovations up two pennies to $49.96. Microsoft up 44 cents. Bed Bath Beyond down 29 in the aftermarket. We've got Pfizer up a penny. Hewlett Packard unchanged. Carvana up 11 to $57.33. Twitter up two cents to $48.87. And that's where we're at here. Um, and there you go. There's there's really the uh, the market right now. The final the final results for the day. It would seem at this point in time. So tomorrow is interest rate day. 123 thumbs ups. Thank you everybody for those. Appreciate it. I want to wish you all a pleasant evening, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning early. Uh, tomorrow night we'll end at eight o'clock tomorrow night on the uh, prime time show for gold members. Uh, and let's see what's going on. Um, let's uh, let's play this market uh, as best we can. Credit Savage uh, says, hey, Uncle B, so let's say SoFi has a tremendous quarterly report and blows all metrics out of the water, and still it goes down to, say, 550. Would it be then time to just give up on it for the year and just sell leaps? Um, I, you know, I, I, that's all hypothetical, so... Let's just cross that bridge when we get there, okay, and see what really the numbers look like. Uh, um, and let's just see what the reaction is for analysts, and let's see what the vloggers and bloggers say, because there are dozens and dozens and dozens of sources of information that we can follow just before and just after the 10th of May. Next week is busy for us because a bunch of our SPACs are coming out with their numbers next week. So we're going to be busy guys here. And so th this is the lull before the storm and hopefully it's a good refreshing storm and we get things going let's see what's going on okay hang on guys and uh join me tomorrow let's make it happen michael thank you john anderson austin thanks uh thank you john gill and and cindy uh um cindy beast i bought back my bought back my sofi cover calls today now can just soar how about that uh thank you guys have a great night and uh, take care of yourselves uh, be healthy, stay well, and enjoy some hockey tonight. I'm going to watch the Calgary Flames play playoff hockey tonight. See how that goes. I'll probably fall asleep after the first period, though. <laughs> I'll be so tired. I'll be so tired. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Options Nomads. You guys are great. Keep it going. And uh, have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. A great evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here from Calgary uh, one more time. Well, a couple more times. Okay, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.